Oh, Crystal Clear Isaac. I like this. Oh, one. Crystal like Clear this. Isaac Robinson. Look at that with that thirty thousand dollars in his bank account. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Get that nice little Wi-Fi. Okay. So for those people that couldn't hear, I asked, "Where the heck are you right now?" And you answered with, "We're in Warren, Ohio, for an urban disc golf event." Which is not Disney World. A little bit different celebration. Uh, the grind doesn't stop. You win. You win your second world title, and you're on to the next thing already. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Um, so is this like a uh, like a charity event, or is this what is this event that you're up there for? Honestly, I'm not entirely sure. I know. Oh. Uh, I know we're going to be giving a clinic and vending, and then I think we have like a small tournament um, on Saturday. So I keep saying we. Is this you and your brother? Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, it's the rest of the guys. So okay. Oh, the, the whole crew's there. The whole, okay. The whole squad. Well, that's fun. I mean, you guys can all celebrate together, I guess. That's cool. I mean, heck, Gannon, Gannon did predict on last week that you were going to win. So it's kind of like no, one's, no one can be really too upset when everyone is saying before the tournament that you're actually going to win the tournament. That's true. <laughs> um, okay, the first thing I have to ask, which I think is what everyone is, you know, top of their mind, number one question. You know, we see Ezra... His wife, a lot of times, is on his bag to caddy. You know, I think I've asked you before, like, you know, who gets to have your dad as the caddy? And I think that was, like, the answer, right? It's like, well, Ezra has his wife. So that leads me to wonder, you're getting married soon. Yes. What, what is the caddy situation here? <laughs> is your dad getting the boot for the wife? I think for for majors, I think the dad, my dad, still got the bag. Okay. Um, I think for the rest of the year, though, you know, my uh, fiance and and then future wife will will, will carry the bag. For What's me. the record for pops on the bag? Oh, he's got to be good. He's got to be <laughs> real good. He's got to be real There's good. There's two world titles and, <laughs> and uh, a champions cup and a champions cup. Yeah. So he's got three majors on, I mean, on the in bag. The past, past two years, yeah, three majors. Um. And those are really the only ones he makes it out to. So um, he told me, he's like, I'm totally catting for you. You, did you see this year? I was like, yeah, that's a good <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, lock that in, lock that yeah. in. Yep. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay to fly him out to Europe next year. So we, oh, that's sweet. So we saw the, uh, we saw the, the, the Facebook comment where someone was basically, you know, made like a funny meme about, you know, you watch Isaac play and you think to yourself like, how this how is this guy a world champion and you watch him at worlds and you think to yourself like how is he not winning at every tournament and mm-hmm. you responded same like is there something to be said about having your dad on the bag that makes that much of a difference between normal pro tour events and majors i think there definitely is um he's somebody i can just talk through my game plan uh kind of strategize with him uh, i can complain to him which is big um and I can just, I can just kind of have casual conversation, which is great. Uh, and that really puts my, puts my mind at rest uh, and allows me to focus uh, more heavily on, on the course and on the shots that I'm throwing. And so I think he definitely has a, um, a good influence on my game. Okay. So this is hypothetical, hypothetical. I'm, I'm not even going to talk about the fact that, Innova is some some for some reason promoting Isaac Robinson a lot right now on social yeah, media. We'll let that's the rumors weird. we'll let the rumors fly <laughs> around on that one. They also did post that Evelina f- video at Texas Roadhouse, which is like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Um, but let's just throw a hypothetical out. Okay, this is a contract year. Your contract is going to be up. You're going to sign with someone, whether it's back with who you're currently with or with a brand new person. Is there a dollar amount that someone signs you that you go, dad, you're just, you're going to caddy for me at every event. Like, is there a money? Is there some sort of dollar amount that makes sense for that to happen? Um, I think for me, absolutely. Cause if I, I play better with him there, um, you know, that means I'm winning more, making more money anyway. So yeah. the cost of having him there would be, you know, basically nothing. Um, I think for him, though, you know, I'm the oldest of eight, so he still has, Jeez, I think, five eight? kids. <laughs> <laughs> you at least yeah. like, I'm about to have one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. If you need some advice, talk to him, Yuli. Um, <laughs> wait, wait. How many brothers and sisters besides Ezra? So I, we have um, seven brothers and one sister. So eight, eight total. How um, many play so, disc golf? How many yeah. play disc golf? Real quick. Are we going to see yeah, six like, more guys come on in tour the top and ten? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. They uh, they play pretty casually. Okay. Um, they kind of. I think Ezra and I spoiled it for them a little bit. You know, that was like all we did, and and they're like, we don't want to, we don't want to be like that. So yeah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, but you know, he still has uh, a lot of kids to raise. You know, wife at home, and I don't think she'd be very happy with him traveling all the time with me okay so, so I'll have to have wait wait i got an idea splitsy half the payment goes to him all of a sudden maybe mama's like yeah wait a <laughs> sounds second. like a this good is, deal yeah this yeah. isn't that bad after all this is very nice um yeah no it's it was very cool to kind of just see I, I i'll say this there has been a massive shift in the amount of people that are using caddies now when mm-hmm. I, for whatever reason, when I first came on tour, people were always told me like, I don't want to have a caddy. I don't want to have a caddy. And like, I always thought that was crazy. Cause it's like, bro, the bag itself is like, it's four or five rounds carrying your bag. Like that definitely adds up, but then also just like having someone there that you can talk to, like, that's also very <laughs> advantageous. So I love that the shift we're seeing on the pro tour where people are now like, finding caddies whether it's you know because back in the day yuli wasn't it just like the only time you'd ever see someone caddy is if your friend finished the round previously and then they would like hop on your bag on like hole 16 or something no, no for sure e- either that or you're in your home state and then when friends can do it but besides okay. that yeah, like yeah no it, one was it, doing you, caddies you never really saw it i mean a few of us would i've always been a pro caddy guy you know and so I would always find like a local or, or something who would want to pick up the bag. Yeah. I always thought that caddies were, were essential and, and playing good. Did, was there a caddy for everyone on the lead card? I think so. Right. No, Cal, Cal, Calvin, 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 Calvin usually carries his own. Yeah. I yeah, think Melton was, there. yeah, Melton was there, he was but he handing was handing him the bag. I saw that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Calvin still nice. carries it. So. Hey, enough caddy talk. Let's get into the real business. Let's, hey, let's get into the meat. Let's go. Isaac, I don't think I've ever... I watched however many championships in my life. And from start to finish, like the look that you had was so focused. Mm. Is there something different about world? majors that pop you into that crazy zone because it's a different Isaac Robinson for sure. I mean, even watching, cause luckily I get to commentate most every single tournament. So I mm-hmm. get to see the players, see the reactions, see the reactions to the shots, the approach to the tee shots, the approach to the putts. And you're just different when it comes to majors. I remember seeing it last year. We watch it and I'm like, how's anybody going to beat, beat this guy mm-hmm. champions cup. How's anybody going to beat this guy? And from start to finish this tournament, same thing. We saw a little glimpse of it at Idlewild, but then obviously we saw also what happened. Yeah. And, that didn't, and that didn't even seem like a possibility at this tournament. So where's the mindset of Isaac Robinson going in into these tournaments? Is it now just a complete belief system? Oh, this tournament's mine. Like, I'm the man. I think it's part of that. Um, I was extremely confident heading into the week. Um, and it was, it was interesting. I was talking with... Um, Gavin Babcock on the way we had gone to to do something. We were driving back and I told him, I was like, isn't it funny that if you focus, you know, very carefully on each shot for the world championships, you could win if you just put, because so many times on the course we're out there and we're just throwing like careless shots, you know, especially on a golf course, you're like, Oh, just throw it out into the field. You'll be fine. But if you actually think about the shot, I want to place it right there and you can execute that shot um and i told gavin i was like i'm gonna try to do that this week i'm gonna try to focus on each and every shot where i want to put it and if i can do that for you know 300 shots for the weekend i'll probably win and uh so that was kind of my mindset kind of going into it of just taking my time thinking about each shot very carefully and you know executing my game plan and so I think this week that was something I, I haven't been doing all year. 
Uh, and so this this week it really ended up clicking really well. And uh, it's you know it's kind of hard to do that on a week to week basis because there's so many tournaments and there's so it's hard to have that mental capacity, <clears throat> you know, week in and week out. Um, but I think that's how the great athletes do it is they they do have that um, mental capacity. Well, Every- what? Yeah, one thing that I've noticed that I think this is the first time it's happened, maybe ever. And I think we saw a little glimpse of it with Nate Doss about how he showed up at the majors. He won other elite series as well. But if you look at his like record through his career, he didn't win a lot, but he won the big ones, you know? And when I, when I look at your career, like we're not going to – until now, obviously, after this weekend, now you're you're that guy. But we look at Gannon, we look at AB and the season that they're having and, and all this firepower out there with Calvin and Ricky and all these people getting wins. And you kind of get lost in the shuffle a little bit, you know? <laughs> but then a major championship starts, a major championship starts, and now you're the man to beat. I truly believe that now. Mm-hmm. I don't think we've seen that since may, maybe Dawson. That's probably a horrible reference, but we have seen that in like traditional golf. There are certain guys who are just major grinders, right? Mm-hmm. Who show yeah. up and you know, okay, like uh, this guy's going to be there. Like Angel Cabrera, for example, like never wins a tournament. All of a sudden, he's in the mix every single tournament, no matter what. What do you feel like you can be the best player in the world? Or are you content with, no, I just want to win the majors and I don't care what anybody thinks about me? Yeah, I think looking at my career and what I want it to be, um, majors are a huge, a huge part of that. Um, elite series are so, so common. Um, they almost feel like warm up weeks for majors. I mean, majors are the ones that count, uh, majors are the ones that people will remember looking at your career. And, you know, that's not a knock against the least series necessarily. But I do think that majors are the are the ones to win. And they're the ones that people are going to look back on and be like, yeah, this guy won, you know, 16 majors. Um, you know, who cares how many elite series? Paul Paul has won. Um, it's countless. You know, it's, it's so many. And his career is defined by majors. And so that's something I want my career to be as well. Yeah. I think, too, hopefully we're starting to see a shift in – what courses ask at majors like to me i think elite series like you can have certain specific tournaments that are hey this is a really short wooded course hey this is a really long open course where worlds it's like no this is a course that you need to have multiple skills Mm -hmm. over the course of multiple days now you, you did mention like the confidence and we talked about this last week about how you were feeling really good going into it. Gannon even talked about it as well. Did that have to do a lot with what the course was asking? Um, there was really only one hole that jumps out at me in both courses where it's like, it, you kind of need to have a big forehand and that's hole 16. Other than that, it's it's really like oh, sixteen at New London. That is sorry. Yeah. Um, other Which than I got that, both rounds, by the way, with a backhand or a forehand? Backhand. How? <laughs> it did get lucky. It did get lucky. Did you get <laughs> lucky through get, the right side? Through both the right sides? side. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But Put commandos on these courses. <laughs> Put commandos on these courses. <laughs> um. But, uh, but yeah, what, what, were you stepping up to these holes like in practice and thinking to yourself, like, I'm never messing up the shot? Like, I'm, like, is that where the confidence was on a lot of this? Yeah. Um, New London, especially. Um, you know, my third round or the, the third round at New London wasn't, uh, wasn't the best round ever. Um, but there was the confidence on those holes. It's such a good course, and I love courses. That Shot seven under, by the way, for those wondering. Yeah. <laughs> um, having a course where if you hit the line, there's nothing in the way. Mm. Um, I just love that. You know, you see that at Jackson. You see that, um, you know, it's I think much it's, it. uh, <laughs> the monster in Tampere a little oh, bit. Okay. Um, Some of the holes and- at Northwood. Some of them, some of them, um, but you see that a lot at New London as well. And so that's the kind of golf that I love. And so 
there was just a, a level of confidence that if I just hit this big initial gap, I'm going to get where I want to be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and we kind of discussed it a little bit about, you know, were you playing safe? And like, if you look at your final round or if you look at really Ivy, for example, like there's only two holes that you're playing for par that you could say that you're playing safe, right? Five and 16. Those are the only two, but to be fair, like the majority of the field is playing the same exact way that you were playing those holes Mm -hmm. because five was nearly impossible to birdie for 90% of the field and same with 16, like 16, you, you were basically throwing a roller and had to get somewhat lucky with your angle to be in bounds. Right. So I I didn't really see it as like, Oh, he was playing the course way better than everyone else. Um, I just think you figured out what shots worked the best for you and you just executed them very well. And it, it seemed like you never really like, Two things. One, it seemed like you never really like exploded on any holes. Mm-hmm. And then the way that Ivy was set up, there were so many holes. This is the one like course critique. And I would love to hear your opinion. There mm-hmm. were, in my opinion, a lot of holes that were quote unquote fluky where mm-hmm. either the greens were way too tight or, um, you know, 14, for example, I mean, I'm sure you saw your brother's post saying that that was the worst hole he's ever played. Now, maybe a little bit, a little heat of the moment uh, mm-hmm. with what happened, but there was a couple holes out there where we were all throwing our shots that you included when you threw your shot in hole 14, everyone just like, regardless of how well you throw it, we all mm-hmm. just kind of hold our breath Sweet. because it's like, if you hit a rock, you can be screwed. So did you feel like that also was a huge part is like, you never really let bad breaks or any of those kind of fluky things like mm-hmm. make you have a blow up hole out there. Cause I mean, you didn't take a bogey until round three, which is yeah. crazy. And, and then, that was a three putt. <laughs> and then uh, you had one double, which was on the fluky hole number six. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that was it, which is like pretty incredible for the, the way that course was set up. Yeah. I think, Going into um, like hole 14 specifically, my game plan, knowing that it was a very fluky green, I wanted to be as close as I could get to the hill so that I had a super easy jump putt approach. Mm. Uh, I didn't want to be throwing uh, a full shot or a forehand or you know any sort of backhand into that green. And so I, had, I knew I had to be within you know 80 feet to execute my game plan. Um, and as far as hole six goes, when I got the double, I did the one thing it couldn't do, and that was to throw it right. Um, the miss is left. If you go left, it's a guaranteed bogey. There's nothing you could, you know, that's the worst you're going to get. Um, and so with the exception of hole six, you know, in the in the fourth round, I felt like I really did a good job of kind of mitigating the, the flukiness of the courses. Um you know, you get bad rolls, especially on hole 10 um, out of Ivy. The, I think it was the second round. We had, we were halfway down the fairway when the spotter waved red for Anthony's shot. You know, so it was, <laughs> it was rolling for legitimately 20 seconds down the hill. Can I jump in real quick? Outside. Yeah. Yuli, the spotter on hole 10, never, I've never seen this before. He was live flag showing. So you would throw the disc. I, I, I played with Gavin Rathbun, same kind of thing. He threw the disc, the spotter, as soon as the disc landed, green flag roll in his hair. And then literally 10 seconds later, we're, cause we're, he's still, we're watching the spotter on the fairway walk with the green flag in the air. And then like 10 seconds later, red flag in the air. We're like, what? And he's still walking. Down the fairway, red flag, red flag. <laughs> and then three seconds later, green flag. Like he was literally going as the disc was going inbounds. <laughs> That's awesome. I had never seen it before, but it was kind of electric actually at the time. But yeah, that whole Isaac was crazy. It's just like you kind of just threw the disc and you just yeah. hoped that nothing crazy happened. Mm-hmm. You know, this this course design when I was watching and watching it, how, how it played out, especially at a major championship, I thought was perfect. And I've heard a lot of like bad feedback, um, just like reading stuff online and and different things. But I think this is the right thing because what somebody should be able to do is get a lead at a major, 
play solid, throw it in bounds, play for par, and make the other guys catch you. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to catch you, they have to throw perfect shot after perfect shot. They can't just wait for you to make a mistake, right? I think it's a brilliant course design because of that, because nobody in a major should be punished for taking pars on hard holes when you can't, when, when it's like, if you go after it, you can get the birdie, but it's so hard. I watched that unfold the final round where you were just placing it in bounds perfectly and you were placing it in spots where you could make a decision. Oh yeah, I can go for this now because they went for it or I can lay up depending on what they were doing. And a lot of them were just pressing too hard and going out of bounds over and over and over again and really making it kind of easy on you, which I felt like is a way majors should be won. Like somebody either has to take it, but I don't want to see this crazy birdie fest. You know what I mean? Well, let's ask Isaac because, you know, anyone that doesn't win a tournament, if they complain about something with the course design, everyone's just going to say, well, it's because you didn't win. You won. So if you could right now say, you know, Ivy for Ivy is going to probably be, it might be the only course that the tour championship is next year. If new London, the back nine gets, you know, obliterated, it might just be all Ivy next year for the tour championship. If you could make a couple changes, if any, like yeah. what are, what are you doing to make that course better in your opinion after dominating and winning the, against the field? Yeah, I think um, a couple things that stand out. Take out hole six completely. Um, okay. It's a bad hole. It's a filler hole. Um, and there's just a, there was no way to, to get a good shot. I felt like, um, you can make good putts for sure. You know, you can make a 40 footer and that was impressive, but there's no way to throw a good shot off the tee. Um, I think 17 also bad hole. Mm-hmm. Um, the tree limbs were, there was way too many tree limbs. The back OB was way too close. Uh, so anytime you, you know, you, anytime you cleared the water, if you weren't hit, like skipping off the water was the most effective shot. Yeah. Um, which I don't think that's uh that's not a shot that requires it requires skill, but it's not a shot that you should be throwing necessarily. Um, and that could be a personal opinion, but um, push that OB back on 17, trim up the branches and then it's okay. Um, 14. I think the around the basket needs to be leveled out. Um, create like a bullseye landing zone where it's flat where you have gravel, wood chips, or something. Mulch um, or something, yeah. So you can pitch up. I love the rest of the green. I think it's great, but you need to have a safe pitch up zone. Um, and other than that, I think the course has a lot of really good potential. Uh, I love the property. It's a beautiful venue. Um, and yeah, I really did enjoy a lot of the holes out there. I think hole five, push it back to a part five. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> You know, it's a bit too hard, I think. You know, I saw a lot of people birdie it that I was playing with, but... I don't know if hard's the right word. It's just, it's just it, it requires you to throw like a 550-foot drive. And if you yes. don't throw a 550-foot drive, you can't birdie it. Yeah. And it makes, it, it kind of makes it boring to watch, I think, as a spectator. Because everyone's just playing for par. Everybody's just pitching up. Yeah. It was it was a great hole for FPO actually because mm-hmm. they where they were landing their tee shots their mm-hmm. second shot was still pretty tough to get it into the right, size got up for us because uh, they played it as a par five so they played it the same way like me and you were playing it right you mm-hmm. just throw a little hyzer out yep. there you chip up and then you throw through that little gap right but for them mm-hmm. the distance was really good to where they actually had to throw three good shots. Where for us, you throw one good shot, you're in the fairway, and then it's just like an easy chip, easy chip, par, boring hole. What are your thoughts on hole four? Silas, can you bring that up? I'm curious I'm curious to what you think on that. Do you think that was fluky at all with the landing zone? I do. When I first played it, I thought it was, it was very tight and a little unnecessary. Uh, as the week went on, I realized there was a, a really good line uh, for the backhand. You just push the tree line the whole way with something overstable. And <clears throat> if you throw it low, you're going to get that skip over the hay bales. Um, and there's also that right side that's open. So you can just skip kind of right into the into the basket. 
Um, I think if you wanted to take out the flukiness of it, if you want to make it more fair, put the hay bales in the back and then just create mm. um, kind of this open island where either you're in it or you're not. Um, and that way, some people don't skip into the hay bales or hit the hay bales or skip over the hay bales. It's, uh, it's a little more fair, I think, if you were to put the hay bales in the back. I think if they would do what whole, um, I think it's hole nine at Ledgestone, the bridge hole. Mm-hmm. where it's a very similar kind of design of like a very small, like green right there. Mm-hmm. Remove. I, I'm with you. Remove the hay bales and make all that hazard tall mm-hmm. grass. So yes. at, at, mm-hmm. at the bridge hole, if you threw short, there was no like, Oh, I hope I get a skip and back. Look, no, you're dead. Mm-hmm. And I think they could do that on that hole too. Now issue it's on a golf course. They can't adjust the grass length. Right. Yep. So like, that's the big issue, but, um, I'm with you. I, I think you're spot on with all your, with all your requirements. Um, I think 18, I don't know how you do it, but I would have loved to see some way of making an Eagle chance just for like a little bit of drum. I know AB threw his second <clears throat> shot over the freaking houses. Uh-huh. Um, and was like, you know, I don't know, a bunch, a uh, hundred feet short or something. Mm-hmm. But like, if there was some way of making that an Eagle chance, I think that would be, add a little bit of excitement sure. down the stretch. But mm-hmm. other than that, so, I think it's pretty spot what about on 14. That's the big talk of the week. Do you like it? Isaac? I, I actually do. I think it's a good hole. Um, at first I was thinking that only the big arms could get it. I was thinking people only like a B Calvin Gannon. Ricky. Um, and Nicholas changed my mind on that. Um, you saw him go the aggressive inside line, which was a legitimate line mm. um, that I did not see many people take, but it was totally there. And he got way up the fairway to the left and uh, just had a little kind of chip hyzer up to, to 40 feet. Um, you know, and then the whole that, thing. That branch, though. We can yes. all agree that branch is... Take yeah, it out. there's Take a there, Yuli, there's a branch on the inside line that's like that's a, it's the inside line's kind of a blind shot. You can't really see the gap off the tee. Um, it's actually a beautiful shot because you would love it because there's like a little hill. So if you go too low, you're dead. Uh, but there is a branch there, and if you watch shots, like everyone's shot is kind of like going through it. And some people go through it clean, some people don't. So I would take yeah. that out. But Take I, out the branch. And I think that, level the basket level, you know, around the basket, like just take feet. all those, take all those rocks out. Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but even, you know, if you had leveled the basket with like a, an eight foot diameter, you know, um, even a putt like Nick losses that hit dead center wouldn't come rolling all the way back down the hill because it would hit on that flat spot and it would stay there. So you would get a lot more uh, safe runs for the birdie. And I think that would be um, really beneficial for that hole. Did you see James Proctor's roll away on that hole from like 15 feet? It was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what these baskets are, but they, that, that so. one in particular didn't, lo- didn't love some people. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, the wife has forgotten that I have a podcast right now. Okay. Uh, continue on, continue on. Um, so, so two time world champion, I asked you last week, like, what would that mean? You know, you are now, hey, shout out real quick, Barry Schultz. That was a name that we forgot to add to that list. So it's Ken Climo, Ricky Wysocki, uh, Paul McBeth, and Barry Schultz, only to ever go back to back at a world championship. So what, what does that mean to you now joining that, you know, exclusive Didn't group? Harold Duvall, too, back in the 80s, I think. I think he did it. Anyways, go keep on. <laughs> if you want to throw them in there, Yuli, throw them in there. <laughs> but like, what, what, what does that mean now that you are now in that exclusive group with those guys? Yeah. Um, it's kind of crazy. If I'm being honest, <clears throat> growing up watching Paul win in 2012 and then through 26, uh, 2015 was just crazy. Cause it was like, wow, like this guy, is insane. Nobody's ever done this. This is crazy. Um, and I was there in 2017 watching when Rick took it down for the second time in, in Georgia. Um, I 
remember getting a picture with him and I was like, man, this is so cool. Like I'm, I'm here with the two time world champion and, uh, it just doesn't seem real, you know? And I, I think I've said that a lot, but life for me hasn't really changed and I don't think it will change a whole lot necessarily, but just knowing there's somebody out there watching and be like, Oh, like Isaac won two times in a row and having that same feeling that I had watching Paul and Ricky, um, is kind of weird to be thinking that people are, are kind of thinking of that about me. Um, and ju- it's just a huge honor. It really is just a crazy honor to have my name up, you know, with those people. I think the crazy thing is, and I don't know if you've thought about this, is I still think disc golf is very in its like early, early years. Now that doesn't mean that I think it's going to be massive, but I think it has the, like, I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's reached its potential. I don't know what its potential is. I just don't think it's reached it. And so like you're kind of in the early years of where you just won back-to-back majors. You're not going on part of my take. You're not going on ESPN. You're not going on good morning America. You're not doing a lot of these things that like traditional top four sports you would do if you had won just two world championships. Right? So but you for, are on tour life, which but, is pretty nice. Yeah, hey, you're on tour life. Hey, 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 hey. But 40 <laughs> years from now, like if disc golf all of a sudden became as big as skateboarding or as big as lacrosse or as big as, you know, soccer in the United States, for example, people are going to look back at the history and your name is going to be there <laughs> and you're going to be known as like, oh my gosh, this was one of the greats at the beginning of disc golf. Like that to me is a crazy thing to kind yeah, of think so, about. And that's the thing I can't quite wrap my head around uh, just because yeah, like it just doesn't feel real that that's <laughs> part of uh, part of disc golf history, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's nutty. Um, does this do anything for negotiations in the off season? Have you thought about that at all? I think it, uh, you know, I was talking to Gannon. He's like, dude, you, you saved your, your off season. Um, <laughs> and I, I kind of agree, you know, I was, uh, you know, top 10 player, you know, sitting in the top 10 points, um, had some good finishes here and there, but this, I think looks very, very good on a resume. Um, heading into the heading into a contract year, you know, not only back to back, but you know, wire to wire at world championships. Um, and I'm looking to close out the season, you know, the rest of the season really well is really strong as well. So yeah, hopefully this isn't the last one this year, but even if it is, I think it's a, a great addition to the resume looking at contracts in the off season. Do you care about player of the year? Does that, does that, does that do anything for you? Um, for me personally, that is a goal to get player of the year at some point in my career. Um, you know, contract wise, I think that would also do a lot for me. Um, but that's, that's a long way off. You know, I'd have to, Yeah. what do you have to do to beat? What do you have to do to beat Gannon this year? I think if I have to beat, I think I got to win green mountain USDGC and maybe the tour finals. And then maybe we can talk, Hmm. but, but then, but then again, it might be the same thing where the same thing as last year, where was the consistency there? Um, and, and it hasn't been this year. So, um, again, has had an extremely consistent year. And so I think that's, that's tough to beat at the end of the day. Yeah. Nutty. You, you got anything else for the man? I think he's got everything he needs. Yeah, well, I know he's busy. He's going to pop on, uh, I think, Smashbox after this. So if you guys want to listen to more Isaac, go check the, him out. Oh, thank you, Silas. Oh, my gosh. We almost forgot. We did not have these uh, last time you were on. So let's, let's pull these up. Shout out to Edwin Stats. We've got Isaac's attributes here. These are your NFL Madden rankings, if you will. So I would love to hear your opinion on these. So we've got scoring at 95, power at 92, Accuracy at 98, which I think is the highest we've seen. Scramble at 90 and putting at 86. DGPT rank number six. Overall, 93. The average for MPO is 85. How do you feel about that? I like the look of that power, though. That's pretty good. 90 is <laughs> pretty decent. 
<laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, um, people talk about it all the time. Like, pe- uh, there are people that don't think you throw far, and it's like, you guys have never played with him. Like, if you think Isaac doesn't <laughs> throw far, you've never played with him. I don't throw flashy shots, that's for sure. Yeah, like you're not you're not throwing these crazy shots in the air that you know do weird stuff. You just you get you get to the point. I got I got 500 pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. What do you anything on there kind of jump out at you as uh, as maybe you would uh, want a different score, maybe a little too high or a little too low? I think the scramble is a bit high. Uh, I'm one of those people that if there's anything in my backswing. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, mm. if, if I'm pinched, if I have to do like a patent pending, um, I get a little, a little shanky. Um, thankfully I didn't have many of those this week, so you didn't really get to see it, but, uh, that's, that's, that's one part of my game that I'm really working on. Um, Edwin and- just said this week you led in scramble. <laughs> so that wasn't in much, wasn't in much danger. <laughs> um, so you you will not be voting for the uh, new PDGA rule of standstill only zones. Is that a rule? No, no I just made that up. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that sounds horrible. Uh, I, it would not surprise me. It would not surprise me if they if they proposed that. Yeah, who knows? They might do anything. <laughs> Um, the one thing that jumps out to me though is is putting. I will say, like, where where are you at on putting? Do you consider yourself one of the best putters on tour? Because I feel like when you're winning, Mm -hmm. and when I see you, like I go back to Idlewild, I think I got to play with you one of those rounds, and I don't think I saw you miss a putt. And then you just continued throughout. So, like in my head, like after that round, I was like, I I was like, Isaac's one of the best putters in the world. But but you know, Edwin just threw up here. You're you currently are 26 in C1X and 43rd in C2. Mm-hmm. So like, the 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 numbers aren't really <laughs> add like aren't adding up to where my head is. So like, where yeah. where are you at with putting? Putting is very um, hit or miss for me. I think that when I'm playing very very well, the only putts I have to make are like 20 feet in it. Mm. So you know. This week, I felt like I was just tapping them in from 15, 20 feet, like, all week. Um, and I did have some good circle two makes, but um, it's one of those things that I always have to be practicing because since my putt is a little different, it's more of, it's a very spinny putt, the release point has to be exactly right. Um, and if that's a little bit off, then my putting kind of goes out the window, it feels like. So something I have to stay, stay on top of. Um, and if I stay on top of it, I think I am one of the better putters in the world. But if it's off, it's it's bad. How good does it feel to to know that little brother isn't going to catch you this year too? Like you got that world title and you kind of just slammed the door because he was having himself a season. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I think the big thing he cares about is DGPT points. So I got him by like fifty, Ooh. and I'm going to try to carry that into the end of the year. But um, I just I just want to see him take one down. You know, I want to yeah. be there. I think I'll we all do things. So, but I don't want him to win one that I'm winning. So. <laughs> You're like, wait, I'll, wait for I'll an off week. Contention if yeah, can. give me, yeah. give me an off week here. Um, no, that was that was definitely exciting to play. Uh, uh, spoiler: Hunter Thomas has now named you as his favorite player. What does that mean to you? Let's go. That means the world. Um, <laughs> he uh, got to spend a lot of time with him this week, which is cool. So it was good to get to know him a little bit better and. Those guys are just just a lot of fun over there. Yeah, I, I when it comes to it, you know, everyone's talking about you know, hey, we need uh, you know, we need the right person to lead disc golf in the right way, and like we want to make sure this one wins because we like the way he, like to me, the fact that you pay play fast. That's all I care about, man. That's all. <laughs> like, if we have these 10, 15 year olds watching and they're seeing you step up putt step up throw a shot because i uh, i don't know their names but there was a couple youngsters out there and i mean they're just taking so much time they're taking so much time and i'm like we need more people to look at isaac and be like hey we should start playing like that sweet yeah a little fast little pace of play situation um any uh any new pet peeves anything jump out at you after this tournament uh worlds anything um 
I mean, I'm sure there was some pet peeves for people that were there spectator wise in the chat. And I, we'll get to that maybe later in the episode, but anything jump out it to you. Um, one thing I would like to see, and this this may be unrealistic, but I would love to see a PDGA official spotter on a lot of holes. Like, I think we should almost make that a standard. Um, because there, there was at least three holes um, in that final round where the card, we didn't have a spotter, or we had a spotter that didn't have a good view. And we just had to make, we had to make some tough calls in the heat of the moment. And when you're kind of competing for a world title, that is, uh, those are tough calls to make. Uh, I think we ended up making the right calls on the out of bounds, but how scary was, was that, that one coming down the stretch? Cause you could have, that could have been a big time number. Oh yeah. On, on, uh, the one on 10. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I was pretty certain I saw it cross and, uh, it was know, well I, in. yeah, I went back and Nicholas was saying, you know, he's like, I, I don't know if it crossed up there. I think it crossed down here. And, uh, Ooh, I was like, I, I don't think we can say with full confidence that it you know, didn't hit up here. Um, and so I ended up taking it up by the basket. Wait, then I heard, I overheard it was two v two, right? Who else said it? You they didn't think you were yeah, made it. Yeah, under the it bus. Was, it up. was kind of a toss up. Um, so Luke Taylor was he was like, I'm pretty sure it crossed up here. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's crossed. And Calvin was like, I don't know. I didn't really see it. I don't really, you know, wasn't sure exactly if you hit it or not. And so Rebecca Duffy was like, All right, that's tie. And if it goes to the play. Um, gotcha. And so I'm, I'm glad we made the right call. You know, if we had made the wrong call, I would have felt pretty bad. <laughs> um, but you know, that's just kind of what goes down in, in those situations. But if we had an, a PGA official spotter, because they have those, you know, we use them occasionally. Um, I think that that would make the calls a little easier. Was that pretty scary? It like was. being in that situation because because you, <laughs> you had just bogeyed right yeah you bogeyed yeah, a whole nine and so now all of a sudden you don't get that call mm -hmm. you're way back there nicholas has also birdied the last three holes exactly yeah and he was parked for birdie on 10 so that's four strokes and two holes yeah that's, that's pretty scary <laughs> and then yeah. what was the feeling one one last question before you go because i i forgot that i wanted to ask you this can, about I, just, four. Hot, can I just throw a hot take because i'm gonna i'm gonna we're, i'm gonna talk about this later but real quick just to yeah. answer isaac's reason why i don't think that exists of why there aren't pdj marshals all over the place yeah they're on vacation brother <laughs> <laughs> worlds is a pdga vacation brother <laughs> hey, is that good? I just get a drive around a cart. I've got a couple stories to confirm that, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about that later. You guys know I love the PGA. Um, so on 14, <laughs> mm -hmm. you throw a kind of a leaky upshot. I'm going to be honest. It like yep. leaks into the thing. It's on roll, hits mm -hmm. the rock, stays there. What were you like? We all know Nicholas is making that. Mm -hmm. And then he makes it, and that thing's rolling down the hill. What's going through your mind? Like, oh, that sucks, but eh? <laughs> yeah, it's one of those where... It's a weird feeling, right? It's a very weird feeling because you hate to see something like that. Yeah. Um, I would rather outplay my opponent every time than have him get bad luck or throw bad shots. Um, I want to beat him because I am better, not because he, he screwed up. Um. But at the same time, there is like, whew, all right, instead of losing a stroke, I have a stroke now. Yeah, it's, it's kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you feel like you had it under wraps after that? Yes. And, yeah. Uh, and then I hit the first tree on 15, and I was like, all right, let's not get too, let's not get too relaxed. <laughs> um, but then especially after 16, uh, yeah. I felt like I had pretty, pretty much locked it down. Yeah, it's kind of like you never, you never root for injuries, mm -hmm. but – in the heat of the moment, you're kind of like, oh, that, that's going to make it a little easier moving oh, yeah. forward, right? For sure. So, for yeah, sure. we're, you're never rooting for someone to have terrible luck. But no. when it does happen, you're kind of like, oh, well, better. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll better, take the stroke. Yeah, I mean, better you than me. Yeah, I, get I mean, exactly. But you still, it's something you hate to see. And, you know, it was, a, I thought it, was, it looked like a good putt. And, uh, you know, I just got that unfortunate spit out. The crazy thing about that hole is like, we never really saw like a like a semi roll away. 
There was never like we see that a lot of where like I mean Evelina on hole 18 looked like she was about to have a roll away and then all of a sudden the disc just stopped which was I mean, we'll get to that in a second later on but uh that hole was like if your disc started rolling it mm-hmm. was rolling 100 feet away there was never a oh it just rolled to circle's edge I can still maybe make a putt for par it was like no you're you're getting a hundred feet it was J- James scary upshot James Proctor was going back to the uh to the tee to, to tee, all the way down the sidewalk to the tee it was crazy it was nuts yeah it's the way that they had set up it was a very uh very weird hole very weird hole but I mean hey you'll take him when you can and like you said like I Nicholas makes that putt. I think it gets a little bit more exciting for us watching down the stretch. I, I still think you win, though. Um, I, I think so. I, I don't think I fluff the upshot on 15 to the tree. Um, I still play it for par on 16. I think you, you played know, it for par on 17, right? I don't know how to play that one for par, if I'm being honest. Oh, I chip, think chip? <laughs> I, I, I never practiced that, so I think that I think I still go for it. And, uh, you know, if he sticks the island and I don't, then we have, uh, what, two strokes going to 18, and I'll just take my par and get out of there. So yeah, I think that... Uh, yeah, you had too many strokes on him down the stretch. He would have had to play absolutely perfect, um, mm-hmm. which, you know, birding 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, like that's a... That's a tough yeah, task. But he, he makes that putt on 14, it's a two shot. It's, two, it's only two shots. Mm-hmm. No, I know, but Isaac's saying he's bur- Isaac's probably burning fifteen. Yeah, gotcha. you know, he, he, the pressure was pretty much off once he bogeyed fourteen. Yeah, moving yeah. forward, four four shots and four holes. It's like, man, let me just limp across the finish line here. Uh, size, do we have this graphic real quick before we let him go? I don't know if you've seen this. Um, Edwin Stats has been tracking this all year. Uh, the Isaac versus Ezra battle. So I, I figured we'd throw this up there. I don't know if Ezra's watching or maybe he'll watch after the fact, but you could show this him. So for our listeners, we've got the average event finish for Isaac at 18.7 for Ezra is actually 16.6 top 10 finishes seven for Isaac six for Ezra. Uh, and then looking down here, you guys are very close. I mean, you're, you're 43rd, uh, 43% birdie rate, Ezra's 42. You're 81% fairways hits, he's 80. I mean, you guys are almost identical. If you look at these stats, like literally you're almost identical. His C2 putting is 31, yours 28. Um, some random stats here. Uh, Isaac is one of only seven players to rank in the top 15 in fairways. C1 in greens and regulation, C2 in greens and regulation. Uh, you only, uh, you also only have one podium finish in 2024 after seven in 2023. Uh, and then for Ezra, his random stats, one of only five players in PO to rank in the top 10 in fairways hit and C2 in greens and regulation. He has three podium finishes this year after only one, uh, coming at DMC. Um, so, wow. It's funny how that works too. Cause your guys' styles are a little to me for the eye test are complete opposites. Like yeah. it's like power <laughs> aggression, uh-huh. just firing the putter. And then yep. you're just kind of picking apart spots and like mm-hmm. kind of a floaty putt. Um, yep. He's a little fiery <laughs> on the course. You seem to keep it together a little more. Pretty funny how that works I, I, out. And then I it's think like just, pretty even across the board. I think mm-hmm. that just tells you like, do what works best for you. Yeah. Like so many people try to change their game to match other people and try to change their form to match other people. It's like figure out what works, works best for you. And then just grind it into the wall. Mm-hmm. Cause people were saying, Isaac, uh, you were, you were spotted multiple times, uh, practicing out there, uh, after some rounds. Yep. So I think after every round went through some more. Yeah. So, I mean, that at the end of the day, it's like just practice, practice, get that confidence, get those reps. And, uh, Maybe mm-hmm. one day, probably not, but maybe one day you'll be a two-time back-to-back world champion as well. How many do you think you can win? Last question before we <laughs> be, like what like what's the mark? Because you got to be setting one at this point. You're like, okay, I got two. I've been on the tour for like three years. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I would like to retire with five. It's a good five number. world titles. Yep, yep. It's a good number. Hey, not trying. 
Set set it at eight, and maybe you'll get to six. All right, fine. Seven. <laughs> seven. I'll go. I'll go for the record. Yeah. Or Paul's record, at least. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> that is nuts. Yeah, to think about like ten years from now, you're going to be in your mid thirties, and you could be like trying to win your fifth one. Yeah. You that's know. Nuts. That's, that's crazy. crazy. I don't want to think that's, about that. That's crazy. Yeah, you got you got to think about your tournament coming up this weekend. The big boy. Yeah, yeah I got to um, take that. I think it's a C tier. All right, you got, uh, I don't know, how, how many people we got watching here? We got over 1,000 people watching, 1,200 plus. Uh, any sponsors, any shout outs, any disc, anything for the people? Yeah, you know, I want to thank, uh, thank Prodigy. Uh, we got some cool two-time merch dropping we got some cool discs so check those out i think they dropped today actually um so check those out it's huge support for me um one i really want to thank is is vessi uh, the shoes i've been wearing all year uh just a super cool company to work with and uh, really great shoes as well so and then other than that you know 1010 discs great retail company and uh, circle one disc golf for the for the polos so did he, is that the guy that came up and said something to you after your round? Which one? I don't know. Someone in the chat told me to ask you what the person after your round said to you. There's a lot of people talking to me after the round. I know they, they, what <laughs> would they say? Hold on. Let me see if I can get their name. What was their name? I forgot. I thought it was, was it vet? You, oh, you see, did you see uh, say something dark horse? Like, Hey, see ya. See you in 2025. Yeah, I guess I guess we'll have to see. Oh, I have to wait and see. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Let yeah. the rumor mills start spreading, folks. But there <laughs> you have it. Two-time world champion. Where's uh oh my gosh, you're trying to do it in international waters next year. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't even think about that. You're gonna try to defend a three-peat situation over in Europe. That's gonna mm -hmm. be electric. Crowds might not be as friendly if me and Nicholas are at it again. I know <laughs> you could go champions cup. Uh, no, it's not champions cup. It's European open. That's uh -huh. can we just real quickly say that's stupid that we're doing back-to-back -back majors. Yes. Very stupid. Like whoever decided that that was a good play. Like I'm so, I just want to apologize to whoever wins the European open because two days after you win, no one cares. Just win them both. Yeah, I guess so, right? Just, just go out and win them both. All right, brother. We won't take up any more of your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're always welcome back on here. Uh, everyone loves when you jump on here. Appreciate it, man. Go enjoy Thanks, it. Tell, tell the guys I say what's up, and we'll see you next time, brother. Yep. Sounds good.